Hello, konnichiwa. Aka, hello in Japanese. So, it is now um, 7 in the evening. And it's really, really dark outside. It is... Let me show you guys, maybe. Ignore the mess in the background. So, this is what it looks outside. I don't know if it's as dark in the camera, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, it's really autumnal, right? Um, so, you know, I was just finishing work and then I watched some YouTube. And I was looking at this YouTuber um, I watch quite frequently and it just made me think and you know when I'm thinking too much I take my camera and I usually talk to it because it's kind of me expressing my thoughts and probably it helps me as well to understand what's going on with me and yeah I don't know I just feel comfortable doing that when I'm overthinking or you know thinking something and I want to share with someone but I don't know anyone to share this with so uh, or not at the minute so I thought why not let's just film this so this topic is gonna be about depression um, mainly because I've also been depressed as some of you might know uh, my mother died of cancer after one year of suffering um, both physically and mentally she passed away in June this year and that radically changed my life and uh, my mental health, which was already messed up because, let's be honest, I wasn't uh, the most cheerful person. I mean, I was with friends, but not with myself. Um, anyway, I was watching this YouTuber and I always thought, oh my gosh, she has this amazing life, like I wish I was her. And... I was looking at the past videos because I recently subscribed to her and I realized she's been suffering of depression for such a long time and she has so many videos of her being low and depressed and not feeling normal and that makes her even more depressed. And you know, I kind of um, identify myself with her to that in that aspect at least so also my bed is not done so ignore that in the corner of the camera just pretend you don't see it <laughs> nice um, so yeah I was thinking and these are my thoughts you know we all have our own opinion uh, it's a democratic uh, period so everyone can have their own opinions that's fine it's just me talking about the way I'm thinking. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm right, I don't know. In From my point of view, I'm right, but from other people's, they might think the opposite, which is, uh, which is fine. Um, but I think this affects many people. And, you know, the question of, is being depressed normal? I mean, I think it is. Um, I think... I don't, if someone comes to me and tells me that, hey, I've never been depressed, I'll be like, really? Never? You've never felt sad, lonely, dark. Um, I feel like every single person has been depressed at some point in their life, unless they're a child or, you know, children. Most of them, you know, they are in this imaginary world where everything is fine. They don't have many problems. There, there are a few children who's, who've been through a very shitty uh, situation at a young age, which is very sad. 
but let's go to the majority and yeah of course majority usually are okay right um I'm part of the shitty situation probably but let's hope that the majority is not um but I think it's very hard to think that people are saying uh, they've never been depressed because depression is something we all must feel at some point. I don't think everyone is happy all the time. Like, all the time. To have that happiness feeling in you and never feeling any disappointment, guilt, loneliness, any of those bad feelings. Be that like for a few hours, be that for a day, be that for a month or a year, you know, or years, whatever it is. But I'm sure that at least for a few hours or one hour or a few minutes, every single one of us have been depressed in the past. Even therapists, right? Life is not something we can control. It just happens. And most of the time, it's it's not gonna happen the way we plan it. Uh, and that's something we have to deal with it, you know, it's up and ups and downs. So, you know, when people ask me, is depression abnormal, something which is not normal? I would say no, I think, I actually really think depression is normal. I think it's something we all have and we all express. And if people say they've never been depressed, I'll be like, what's wrong with you? That's, from my point my point of view, abnormal, right? Um, so, no, I think, I absolutely think that depression is normal. Um, now, it depends on what depression, how that depression is making people act or behave, right? So, if your depression is there, but you can control it, you are logical about it, and you know you have it, right? Because most of the time you just have to admit you, admit it. Like, I admit I'm depressed. I know something is wrong with me, and I'm not trying to find what, or I'm not trying to question why is something wrong with me. I just know that it's there, and I acknowledge it. And that's fine. Because I'm logical about it, you know. And if we come to the bigger topic, um, and many people maybe will hate me for this or dislike it, but, you know, it's it. let's put it there, it's happening nowadays. And that is suicide, right? Have I ever been suicidal? I did have suicidal thoughts. But again, I think many people do. And I'm saying thoughts, right? Because, yes, I've been thinking what will happen if I just do this, right? But I would never have actually acted on it. Because, first of all, I'm too scared of doing that. Um, secondly, I would just... I think... You know what? I had these thoughts. But I think the people who do actually commit on suicide... I kind of hate them... To a degree, not hate them, but I don't have a good opinion. And it's mainly... I understand that everyone does whatever they want with their life. But I think those people are very selfish just because they are going to hurt the people that love them. And friends and family. And that's another thing. Because I watch a documentary on uh, students at university committing suicide because they found university too difficult. And, you know, the family, uh, partners, friends in that documentary, they were suffering of post-traumatic um, stress disorder because they knew that person and they didn't know something was wrong with them and they didn't do anything to prevent it. So those people who will be left behind will have to deal with this, um, this feeling. And I know that feeling because I'm suffering from it because my mother died of cancer. And to imagine that this is the feeling that people feel after someone committing suicide, it's just, it's very difficult. I don't want, I don't wish this feeling on anyone, to be honest. Um, so that's one reason why I think, you know, people should not commit suicide, because they need to consider the, the, the rest of the people they leave behind them, right? Um... But yeah, I was thinking about it. Um, 
and I was thinking, is there something wrong with me that I'm thinking about it? Is it, it's, it's supposed to be one of those thoughts you're not talking to anyone about and you're not thinking about. It's like the no, no, no area. Um, but then it's not really what I feel. It's just a thought. Like even now, after every been, I, everything I've been through and everything that I'm feeling, when I when I found out that I'm on a suspicion of cancer myself, I panicked and I realized I I've, I've done a lot of thinking during that time and I realized that I actually I don't want to die. I do not want to die. I'm not ready for it and I do actually want to leave. Which made me realize I you know I'm not suicidal. It's just it's, it's difficult to put this into words, so I definitely want to leave. I want to keep on traveling, to make more friends, to go out there in the world and enjoy it and find happiness, hopefully, at some point, uh, despite not having it at the moment. Uh, but it's just that every single day is so difficult and every single day it's exhausting and I wake up thinking, oh, this is just another day. I, I don't even distinguish be between yesterday and today. I'm just waiting for the days to go by. But then I don't want to die. So, you know, that's kind of the depression term um, I'm using. So, you know, you just don't... You see your day going in vain. It's just you don't you don't know what you're supposed to do. You don't know how to get out of it, but then you don't want to die. Um, so, of course, there's a few people who act on this and they're very serious about this. And in that case, I'm saying, yes, that might not be normal and you might need some help. Um, but I think the main reason this is happening is communication. So people, including myself, because I've been there and that's why I'm talking, like I'm coming from someone having suicidal thoughts and someone who's been suffering with depression. And apparently when I was in high school, I've been to a doctor and he told me that I'm suffering with chronic depression. And that was longer than 10 years ago when I didn't, I didn't go through much shit, you know, in life. I mean, I did have a bad childhood my parents were very strict and they were punishing me a lot so I was very terrified by them when I was a kid and okay one second my battery is dying amazing hey again so I am now on my phone because my camera decided to just die um, as always whenever I am in the middle of an important video anyway so back to the topic, um, what was I even saying? Hmm, Alzheimer. Uh, so yeah, uh, I didn't have the most amazing childhood, so apparently I was left traumatized. And what's happening here? Um, and yeah, apparently that's why I suffer from chronic depression. And that depression has escalated with years I will say so even before my mom died I was depressed because the guy I liked ignored me or because of a breakup or because work wasn't going well and I was always looking for ways to um, go around it and find something exciting in the future so I can keep on going another day, another month, another year, and so on. So, the thing is, um, for years, for many years, I never told that to anyone, not even my parents, not even my friends, because there is this mentality that depression is not normal. So, whenever I tell someone, oh, I'm depressed, they'll be like, yeah, you 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 have a problem. You messed up. You got to get that fixed. You need to be fixed. And I was like, am I broken? Because you know who's who's actually being there, 
checking on the, you know, a checklist, ticking. Oh yeah, this, she's doing this. She's going to see between 10 and 8, um, 10 p.m. 8 a.m. So that's fine. Uh, oh yeah, she's not skipping breakfast. That's fine. Oh yeah, she has a job. That's fine. Yes, you are a normal person. Like, how can you even split people into normal and ab abnormal? Like, many, many times I was told that I'm weird in terms of personality, in terms of whatever I say or whatever I do, and that I'm different than other people in a good way. So that those were like good friends who were like, oh, I like you because you're such a, a weird character, right? Uh, so you're different than other people. And no one said that, you know, being weird is actually a bad thing. I'm different, okay. But that doesn't mean I'm, you know, I'm not a normal person. It's the same with depression. Like, what what allows people to say, yeah, you're depressed, you're not normal, you're broken, so you need to fix that. And even in comments, sometimes I see people who's telling me, you know, stop thinking about your mom and you're not going to be depressed, you need to live your life, just have happy thoughts and carry on. And it's, it's not, you know, it's... I don't want to do that. I, I don't want to stop thinking about my mom. Um, yes. Remembering the fact that she died. Remembering the night she died. And how scared I was. And the way in which she died. And remember all the bad things. Along with the good memories, right? Um, I have. It's. I kind of want to remember even the bad ones because it's part of me, it's part of who I am and I don't want to forget them. I feel like I want to remember even the bad moments I had with my mother and I know every single time I'll remember them, I'll gonna go straight into depression and, you know, start crying. But it's part of who I am and I do want to remember those and that doesn't make me abnormal, it just, it's just who I am, you know. And... I know I have a problem and I'm logical about it. I'm not gonna do anything stupid, I just acknowledge it. And you know, now compared to a few years back then, I do let friends know that. So most of my close friends know I'm depressed. Um, and it's good to speak with them about this because it helps me a lot mentally. And you know, if you have a friend and you tell that, or a loved one, family or someone, and you told them, hey, I'm depressed. And they and they come back they come back to you and say, That's not normal, you're broken, you're messed, you need you need help, you know. And they don't help you by communicating with you, acknowledging your depression. I don't think they're a good friend or a good family member because they should be there for you. And I think that's what's lacking and leading people to commit suicide. It's mainly the fact that we have the standard thinking that, oh, you're depressed, you're not normal. And people either go away or they will treat treat you weirdly. And you are embarrassed to tell people that. You are embarrassed to admit it. And you're left by yourself. And you, when you're in depression, you don't want to be by yourself. Because depression is bringing with it the most extreme loneliness you'll ever feel. Like... I feel darkness and loneliness and I'm so scared many times and I'm so terrified and I need people around me when I'm in that state. And I think that's why communication is essential and I think that's why people should stop saying that depression is not normal and criticize people um, or tell people, oh, you shouldn't be depressed. I think you just need to let them be depressed. You need to let people go through these stages in life. And, you know, with communication and with help from others, they will eventually go around it. And, you know, um, for me at least, what helps me a lot is trying to find um, something exciting in the future that wants me to keep on going forward. So, for example, at the minute, I am uh, in the process of buying a house, house of flat. Hopefully, I don't know if I can get it. I'm looking for it now um, and I'm trying to put some uh, reservations 
and we will see where it goes but the idea of actually having a flat and you know decorating it buying the furniture moving it thinking of the area where it's gonna be all the possibilities and i'm just so excited that i cannot wait to get to the point of having that flat and moving into it and i think it's important to think what will make me happy what will help me carry on so despite today tomorrow the day after tomorrow not having a goal and not knowing what to do with my life how can i get to a point where i will enjoy the future so for me the flat is one thing and i'm really looking forward to buying it and to be fair i never plan to buy a flat this year or next year especially that i was on a tight budget but you know, and I kept on saving and saving and saving for a better flat and a better flat. But at this point, I was like, fuck this. I'm just going to get a flat with the money I have. Because mentally, I know it's what I need. And I need it now. So, I made that decision pretty much two months ago. It was very sudden. And even my broker was like, wow, that's <laughs> like, it's been only one month. What what happened with you? How How did you make that decision? It's just on the spot and it's based on my instinct, but I know mentally that helps me a lot. And despite not finding happiness and joy at the minute, uh, from one day to another, I cannot wait to actually have my own flat. And I know it's going to happen in the future and that helps me carry on and having a goal. And, you know, if that's what's making me happy or whatever is going to help me find happiness, a bit of happiness at some point, you know, I'm gonna go for it. Uh, the other thing which helps me is traveling and I cannot travel at the minute because if, you know, if I want to buy a flat, I'm pretty much barely eating <laughs> because I don't afford. So definitely I don't have enough money for uh, trips. Um, but, you know, if I do achieve uh, my goal of buying a flat then in a few months from I don't know February March onwards I will hopefully have enough money to actually go on another trip and there is a Cuba trip uh, which I'm very excited about which might happen next year despite being cancelled for two years in a row now um, but I love the um, I mean from the movie I love Cuba and it's been on my on my list after Japan, um, and I'm really excited about it. So it's gonna be with a group of people, not many that I know. So it doesn't have to be with people you know. You know, if you're lonely to go on a trip by yourself, just go with uh, organize trips uh, with group of people. Maybe you don't know, but you know there're gonna be a lot of people in these group trips. So that's gonna help you to not feel lonely. Um, and that's what I'm doing as well. So that's another ex exciting thing I'm looking for at some point next year. And you know, I don't have many plans, but only this to the Cuba trip and the flat. It's helping me have a goal. And I kind of have this excitement that I cannot wait for this year to pass and get to the next year to be in a new flat and start enjoying a new life. So I feel that helps me a lot. And until then, I have friends to talk with about my depression who help me a lot um, mentally. So, yeah. Uh, I think I just wanted to point that out, you know. If you, if you speak with someone who's depressed, I, I, I want to ask people to not mention anything about them not being normal or making them feel guilty or embarrassed or you know uncomfortable because of their depression because that's just gonna push them away even more i would rather like people to acknowledge it and be like it's okay to be depressed it's okay not to be okay uh, you know many people are not okay and i think about 60 percent i was reading somewhere i don't know if this is true but about 60% of people actually get depressed even when the seasons change. So especially fall because it's getting dark so early and because of the cold and you cannot go out as much, you know, sit on a terrace and drink a beer or whatever we do during summer. 
Because of that, many people go into depression and there is a name for that, apparently. I, I didn't even know that. I was always depressed in autumn and I was like, what's wrong with me? Looks like it is an actual thing. I'll look for it and then I'll put the name somewhere here. Uh, it is actually a condition. Uh, and Not a condition. It is a known um, event, I guess. Many people get depressed with autumn. Um, because of the darkness and coldness so only that alone brings people to depression taking you know, aside the events or genetic in the family because some people have a condition which is genetic like bipolar uh, disorder or anything else which is making them have a mental problem right and many things are genetic, so we need to understand that it's not something people can control, you know. So don't don't tell people stop being depressed because it's not like we can, oh yeah, that fix it, I'm so happy now. Like, let's go enjoy this life. That's not how it's working. So, you know, instead just acknowledge it, tell them it's fine to be uh, depressed, it's okay not to be okay, it's okay to have moments and times. And maybe ask them, you know, if they want to talk about it or how you can help them. Um, go over the depression like do they want to go for a walk do they want to speak with you on the phone do they want to find a goal for the future maybe tell them oh let's go to this place in the future let's go have a trip in Germany if that's what they want I don't know find something that will make them want to get to that point right but I do think that communication alone um, helps a lot so, yeah, those are my thoughts at 8 p.m. in the evening because I have nothing better to do. It's Friday and everyone is starting to enjoy the weekend and I'm here by myself. So, I noticed that YouTubers being low and depressed very often. So, I was thinking, I really, I'm really proud that she's talking about it and I really respect respect the fact that she acknowledges it and she talks to people in camera about it because if that helps her like who cares what you know friends and other people think about it it is what it is you know we should support each other when we can and um yeah that um, made me fall into this uh, chain of thoughts anyway that's kind of about it um, speaking of depression, tomorrow I will meet another friend um, whose mother died of cancer as well. So I know it's gonna be a depressing day. But you know, I'm kind of looking forward to it because she's been through the same um, mm. event and she's probably had the same thoughts and it's nice to talk about this with someone who can understand me. And it's been a similar situation. So let's see how tomorrow goes. And I'll keep you guys updated. See you next time.